Hello, we will solve the last lap of the JSON Web Token attacks topic from the Web Security Academy. The name of the lab is JSON Web Token Authentication Bypass via Algorithm Confusion with No Exposed Keys. Uh, key. The browser that I use is the built in browser of Burp, and I also use the Burp extension JWT Editor. Okay, go to your browser and click the My Account link and log in with Wiener and the password Peter. In the HTTP history tab, you see there are some requests are highlighted. That means that these requests contain JSON web token. We are interested in the get request to the endpoint my account, send this request to burp repeater and switch to burp repeater. In the request section, go to the request line and change the endpoint to admin and send the request. You see we received an HTTP 401 unauthorized in the response section. That means we can't access the admin panel as the user wiener. Back in the request section you see there is a cookie header and this contains a session parameter. The session parameter contains our JSON web token. A JSON web token consists of three parts. The first part is the header. Double click it and it is decoded in the inspector section. The second part is the payload. Double click it and it is also decoded in the inspector section. The last part of a JSON web token is a signature, but this is not important in our case. Okay, the first part of the lab is obtaining two JSON web tokens generated by the server. The first one is here. Copy the whole JSON web token, copy and paste it in an editor. You see I use the Visual Studio code and here paste the first JSON web token. Go to your browser and log out from the application and log in again. Wiener and the password Peter. Go to Burp proxy and scroll down in the HTTP history tab to the second get request to the endpoint my account. Here copy the whole JSON web token from the cookie header, copy and paste it also in your editor. Zack. Paste. Okay, the second part is to brute force the server's public key. For that we use a docker file, a prepared docker file from portswigger. Use sudo docker run rm it port swigger slash sick to n and the first value is the first JSON web token. You can also use the second JSON web token, paste, and the second value is the second JSON web token. And paste. Okay, hit enter, type in your password, and start brute forcing. Okay, if you start the Dockerfile the first time, it could take several minutes because it will be downloaded from the Docker Hub. So I started earlier, so if we have luck, so it shouldn't take so long. Okay, so. Okay, you see the results. Okay, here. This is important. The base64 encoded X509 key and the base64 encoded PKCS1 key. We need the Tambridge JSON web token from the X509 key. Okay, so copy the whole. JSON web token copy and go to your burp repeater. Burp repeater and here replace the 
value of the session parameter in the cookie header. Paste. Now go to the request line and change the endpoint to my account to test if we have select the correct JSON web token. Send the request and you see in the response section we received an HTTP 200. Okay, that means we have select the correct JSON web token. Okay, the next part is generate a malicious signing key. For that, open the JSON web token editor keys and click the new semantic key. Here, click the generate button, leave the key set as it is. And now the value of the K property should be the key from the X509. So for that, copy the whole string. Okay, copy. And switch to a submit a key window. Set a mark to the whole property and paste. Okay, see everything is correct. Double quotes at the beginning, double quotes at the end. Okay, now click OK. I will delete the old one. Okay, the last part is modify and sign the token. Go back to Burp Repeater and here go to the JSON Web Token subtab and in the header section replace the value of the property Ike to HS256 and in the payload section change the value of the property sub from Wiener to administrator. Okay, administrator. Now resize the request section until you see the three buttons. Now click the sign button and choose the generated key. Leave everything as it is and click OK. Go to the raw tab and here in the request line change the my account endpoint to admin and send the request. You see in the response section we received an HTTP 200. OK, that means we have successfully accessed the admin panel. Scroll down to the path that deletes the user Carlos. My account administrator here. And here's the admin delete question mark username equal Carlos. Copy this path and go to the request line and replace the admin endpoint paste and send the request. Follow the redirection and you see in the browser we solved the lab and in the re response section you see the first message congratulations you solved the lab and the second message user deleted successfully.